Hello and welcome to a new beginner's guide for rework Syndra. With recent changes, Syndra has shifted from an early game stat check menace to a solid scaling mid game carry. While this means you have less agency in the early game, you more than make up for it with impressive damage output coming into the mid game. So let's get into it. In regards to rune pages, there is a lot of options available for Syndra right now, and I'm not kidding when I say there's 4 to 5 valid pages. So we're going to be going through all of them and giving you a quick rundown on why to take them and when to take them. The first one we have is the aggressive variant, which is Electrocute. Electrocute is very unique because it requires you to cycle through skills to activate it, which requires three separate attacks or abilities, which means that you have to commit. You have to all in when using Electrocute, which means you get a lot of damage, a lot of burst, and it's really fantastic for one-shotting people. Now, the issue with this is that in some matchups, you're not able to utilize Electrocute. So if you're playing against a lot of things that are short range in nature or maybe mid range, Electrocute is really fantastic against them. Taste of Blood is really fantastic because it gives you lane sustain that helps you play aggressively without... It just basically remedies if you make a mistake, you're all good. Eyeball Collection for additional AP makes your late and mid game potential a lot higher just from the extra AP threshold. And then Treasure Hunter, because you're playing for a very aggressive snowball lane, gives you additional gold which you can use to expedite your itemization, which is Shadow Flame, Rabadons, you can hit them very very fast, or even just Ludens and Sork Boots in general. Next we have Manifold Band which gives us additional mana cap, this makes it easier to wave clear and match and look for maybe roams, and also just gives you mana regeneration to play aggressively with your combos and look for those EQs without feeling like you're just running out of mana. Scorch is fantastic for early game because it allows you to get a huge HP advantage for like in terms of resources and look for those kill opportunities as a result, uh, result of it. Now, attack speed adaptive armor is traditionally what you'll be taking on most pages because attack speed allows you to 1v1 trade with Q but also just last hit in general without feeling like your animation's too slow, adaptive for additional damage, and then you'll be taking armor MR depending on what your 1v1 matchup is. So again, Electrocute fantastic against low to mid-range champions where you have kill potential. Next we have another aggressive variant, which is Airy. Airy is also fantastic against short-range mid-range champions, but the difference between Airy and Electrocute is that Airy has a 6 second cooldown, while Electrocute has a 25 to 20 second cooldown. So there's a very big difference, right? When you run Electrocute, you have to hit 3 hit combos. When you use Airy, it applies on every single attack, every single ability, but does a lot less damage. So the idea is that you can continuously apply pressure and constantly get free chip damage with Airy without having to commit all your skills to all in, which is why it's pretty good. Mana Flow Band, again, for additional mana caps, so you can wave clear or just match and look for roams. Transcendence gives you a lot of scaling potential with the additional ability haste. And then it also gives you a reset cooldown whenever you get a kill after level 11, which gives you more access to your EN teamfights, which is just insane. Scorch again for additional lane bully power so that you can create kill windows for yourself. And then the difference between these two pages is that you get access to Biscuit Delivery, which gives you 8% of missing health and mana, which is great for lane sustain. But also gives you 40 mana cap per Biscuit Devoured, which means you get additional 120 mana, so you basically get infinite mana. Now, Cosmic Insight's very cool because it gives you additional item haste, which means that your Ludens has more active uptime, you get it back faster, which gives you the move speed faster, get more damage in with the active, and also gives you Summoner Spell Haste, which goes into your Flash, your TP, your Ignite, and that is pretty cool. Again, Attack Speed Adaptive Force, and then Armor MR depending on matchup. And then we have the Korean build, which is First Strike. First Strike is fantastic for matchups where you are basically not able to actively use your Keystone. So if you're not going to be using your Keystone or your Electrocute anyways, you can just take First Strike, and when you do get to use it, you just get a little bit of gold on top of it. So this is a really great page for basically hitting mid the late game spike, because it gives you maybe 400 to 1,200 gold based on the matchup, and that will expedite your item lead and still give you a decent bit of damage. Of course, it'll never match your Electrocute in terms of damage, because in order to do 300 damage with First Strike, you have to do 3,000 which is pretty fucking hard, right? Whereas Electrocute, you'll do like 150 at like level 9, which is crazy. Uh, Magical Footwear is really fantastic because it gives you 420 gold worth of free value. So you just get it by AFKing in lane, so it's really good. Now the issue is that because Syndra can be played aggressively and does need the additional move speed, sometimes you would rather just take perfect timing instead. If you're playing against a matchup like Zed, Fizz, or anything else that has a lot of kill potential on you, just take perfect timing anyways for the free stasis effect, and then it'll build in the Zhonya as a second item, which has a statistically very high win rate. Uh, next, if you're in a really fucked up matchup, we're talking Victor, Azir, 
anything with lots of poke where you cannot survive lane phase. I recommend taking Biscuit Delivery instead of Minion Demat just for the additional lane sustain. Otherwise, you can just take Minion Demat to help you with cannon timers, but also just general wave clear. Cosmic Insight again for the active timer on Ludens and the additional CD on TP Flash and stuff like that. And then the difference between this page and the aggressive builds is that you're going to be taking a Gathering Storm, which means you're playing for a mid to late game. Every 10 minutes, you get additional amount of AP, which gives you a lot more mid to late game power. At 30 minutes, it's 29, which is pretty good. Transcendence again for the additional mid lane game scaling, attack speed, adaptive armor. If you are completely fucked, you could drop attack speed for adaptive adaptive, but then you won't be able to last hit as well, which is kind of the trade-off. And then finally, we have the you're absolutely fucked and you're going phase rush build. So phase rush has a very low play rate, but when it is played, it's specifically because you have absolutely no shot of surviving without the additional move speed to reposition. Um, some people have found a way around this by taking ghost instead of an aggressive or defensive summoner which I would honestly prefer to phase rush just because you have absolutely zero kill potential by taking phase rush. It does mean that you can continue a trade and like run them down and get more Qs in, but it's not like Syndra lacks damage with the new iteration and the execute on your ultimate, so I'd rather just play through that by having Electrocute or First Strike. And again, the page is pretty much identical to the other ones with the intention on scaling instead for phase rush because it is a mid to late game keystone. Biscuit Delivery and Cosmic Insight just to shore up your early game and then also have the potential Ludens and CDR on your summoners. Uh, technically, you can go Arcane Comet on Syndra. This is typically what you would do in the past against matchups like Xerath, Azir, Victor. But with First Strike being such a common and stronger variation, there's really no point in taking Comet just because you don't have the kill potential anyways. So you might as well just play for gold generation. And that's pretty much it. That's it for runes. If you have any questions, you can go and ask in the comments and I'll get back to you. But yeah, once again, recap, you're going to take Electrocutor Airy if you're trying to absolutely fuck up your lane. Um, you're going to do this very often if you have an aggressive jungler like Lee Sin, Kindred, Graves, where you need to play for lane phase or you have a kill lane matchup. Very easy matchups. If you're in a fucked up lane where you have absolutely zero shot of killing them ever, you're going to take first strike and you're going to play for scaling. Or if you have a really useless jungler that just perma farms and does nothing like Shivana Kane until level 9. Hello friends and welcome to the itemization portion. Uh, this is something that a lot of people have been confused about for every champion that I play in the mage variant. D-Ring is just a better item than C-Pod in pretty much every single way. And I'm going to go ahead and show you why that is so that you guys don't have to ask me this question in the comments. But just go and take a look at these items. This is 500 gold for essentially 300 health and mana. And it does give you 15 damage whenever you are in combat, which isn't fantastic by any means. So that's 300 HP, 225 mana, Three charges, right? Refillable. 500 gold. You look at D-Ring. This gives you 70 health, two potions, which are 120 each. So that's 310 health. So it's 10 HP more than Corrupting Potion. It gives you one mana to 1.5 mana based on whether you're in combat or not. So if you're in lane for five minutes, and five minutes is equivalent to... Sorry, let me pull up my calculator. Five times 60, that's giving you 300 mana, which is more than... 225. So D-Ring just outvalues from that capacity as well. And then you also get 15 AP, which is more damage than what you'd get from Corrupting Potion because it's constant. And D-Ring does, in fact, give you the ability to stack a lot of ability power early since you don't have to invest into 500 gold of C-Pot. And if you really, really do need the additional lane sustain, you can just go ahead and buy a refillable potion on your first recall. You may lose one potion charge, which is 100 HP, but 150 gold for infinite potions and saving yourself 350 to buy a Dark Seal with is a really fantastic way to just go ahead and snowball out of your mind. Once again, Dark Seal is one of the best items in the game, having a 300 and like 80% gold efficiency just from playing the game correctly. You should be buying a Dark Seal in every single game that you play if your goal is to climb because it's a broken item. You will not upgrade it to Mejais unless you are the second coming of Christ, and you'll just go ahead and leave it there with 10 stacks and it's giving you 60 ability power or rather 55, which is like 1250 gold value almost. So it's pretty fucking insane, right? In terms of boots, uh, you're pretty much going to go Sork Boots every single game just because Magic Penetration is the most valuable stat for mages right now. Magic Resist is so broken that if you don't have Sork Boots, you're going to do negative damage. Um, if you want to go Lucidity Boots, typically it's going to give you a lot of cooldown, right? So the Ability Haste allows you to have uptime on your skills, which allows you to put uh, constant pressure on the opposition. Now, the sad thing is most of you aren't good enough to actually use Lucidity Boots, which is why the win rate is always going to be lower than Sork Boots. It's just too hard to use. 
Because even if you have the uptime, you're not constantly using your skills in combat. So Sork Boots allows you to cycle through your skills on Electrocute and then walk away and wait for them to come back up. Which is why Sork Boots will just pretty much always be a better item. But you can see that Lucidity Boots are cheap as fuck. They give you constant pressure and lane, and then they also give you extra summer spell haste, which is pretty nice in general. But you can see why Sork Boots is just more valuable in general. Next, when it comes to Mythics, best in slot is going to be Ludens, just because of the additional mana, ability haste, echo. Everything on this item is fantastic for Syndra. I just hate the fact that they nerfed Magic Penetration, but it's all good. Magic Pen's really fantastic, gives you a lot of extra damage burst. And this is really great against squishy targets, so pretty good item in general. If you're playing against a lot of tanks, if you're playing versus something like triple tanks, Leandre's is going to have more value just because the longer you're in combat, the longer you're ticking on Torment and Agony. Uh, if you take a look at this item, it does bonus damage based on their bonus health, which means that you're getting additional damage. It also just causes them to burn for percentage health over time, so it's a great tank killing item. If you're playing against a lot of tanks and you're not able to access the backline, Leandre's will still do fantastic, and even with most builds, you can one-shot their backline with Leandre's. So it's all good. If you're getting absolutely fucked out of your mind and you want a really cheap item that gives you HP, you can go Crown. The issue of going Crown is that your damage output is going to be so fucking low that you'll regret buying this item. But the good thing is, you probably won't die as a result of purchasing it. So this is a very, very dangerous niche item that you should not rely on unless you're absolutely fucked playing against like a Yasuo Diana composition, Yasuo Gragas, or Zed, Talon, and a bunch of other champions that make your life miserable. That is the only valid reason why you build Crown. Everfrost is again a very cheap item that gives you access to HP, which is great for survivability. Kindle Gem makes you stay alive. And it's also really good against melees who are high mobility, so you can just guarantee that your QE lands. Uh, really cringe that they removed EQ from Syndra, which means you can no longer push them back and then stun, so you actually have to use your skills aggressively to maintain distance. Uh, I personally don't build Night Harvester ever because it doesn't have mana, and I feel like I'd run out of mana in an instant. But this is an item that seems to be building pretty often in higher elo right now, Masters. It's a 1.5% pick rate. But it's a higher pick rate than Everfrost, which is why I included it. But it gives you additional move speed every single time you hit a new target, which allows you to reposition constantly in combat while having that extra health to work with. And ability haste is always nice, which is why this is on the mythic list. But this is the general... This is the order priority. Ludens, Leandre's, Everfrost would be like my recommendation, probably. Ludens is obviously best win rate if you're able to play champion the way she's meant to be played. Leandre's, you're probably fucked in draft. When it comes to second itemization, Rabadon's is a very, very, very fucking expensive item. So it's 1250 on both of these items, which means that if you mess up a single recall, you won't be able to buy a rod, which means that you're delaying your power spike and you won't be able to finish Rabadon's very easily. And oftentimes people in lower elo will overstay the recalls and that just puts them behind and then they overstay and die. So I typically recommend Shadow Flame just because it gives you immediate power spikes. You could always build Rod towards Shadow, and if you have the ability to go Rabadons, you can go Rabadon second. But if you ever mess up, then you can just go ahead and buy components for Hextech Alternator. And it's nice because it gives you HP, which is more survivability in cases of like hardcore combat. And Shadow Flame just gives you a lot more value, just because it gives you immediate power. And you're also just a cheaper item, 600 gold cheaper, which means you hit it faster and then you get the 20 magic pen. It's a really, really great item. So this is like the priority is that if you're playing to snowball as hard as possible early, Shadow Flame, but if you're playing for mid to late game scaling, you'd go Rabbit on second. Um, void Staff is if you need penetration and they're playing triple tanks, typically I only do Void Staff second if I have Leandre's first item, because for the most part, Shadow Flame Ludens is just absolutely killer. And of course, if you're playing against uh, Zad, Fizz, or any other broken champion that just completely one-shots you while making you say, wow, this is a really fun and balanced game, you're going to be going Zanya's. And Zanya's actually has a really killer win rate, surprisingly, like a 60% on second item, so maybe they're onto something by making yourself unkillable on a scaling champion. Now, essentially, if you are going Rabbit on second, you have to consider for your third item, do I want survivability in the form of a Zanya's or Banshee's, or do I want penetration in the form of a Void Staff and a Shadow Flame? If you are building Penetration 3rd and onwards, Void Staff will typically be more value just because it is cheaper. And at that stage of the game, 3rd item is around 22 to 25 minutes. Most people will have one MR item or will be building into MR, which makes Void Staff more valuable. So that's why you typically see Shadow Flame 2nd, but not really that often as a 4th or 3rd item. Now, if you need survivability, again, you can go Zanya's, but you're basically just alternating these items. Once you build Rabadons, you have to build Survivability or Penetration, and if you build Penetration, then you have to either build Survivability 
or rather if you build uh, Rabadons for raw AP, then you're going to need the Zhanyas of the Penetration to increase that value. Here's an example of a full build. You can see here that I go for an early game build, I get really aggressive Shadow Flame. This gives me a lot of mid game spike, and then I get the Rabadons. I realize I need protection now that I do enough damage, and I build my Zhanyas, and then for my final item, I buy a damage amplifier in the form of Magic Penetration. So this is pretty standard for Syndra. Uh, I thought that with the changes to Q that maybe there would be something like an Ability Haste build where you go Archangel second or even the Cosmic Drive, but it looks like it's still the pretty standard. And I think this is just because itemization for mages is so fucking awful, and with the preseason coming soon, probably will make it worse with all these tank items. So looking forward to that, we'll probably need a buff on Void Staff to even re like maintain relevancy, but Syndra's in a pretty good spot right now, so it's the... It's all I could ask for, really. Hi guys, and welcome to the ability overview for Syndra. There's a lot of changes, so it's important that you understand what is going into the new Syndra. Her new passive collects Splinters of Wrath, and these will upgrade her abilities at 40, 60, 80, 120 Splinters, respectively. And every time that she claims a Splinter from an enemy, she'll get an additional mana based on her level. So I collect a Splinter, but I also get mana back, which rewards you for playing aggressively. Now you can collect splinters by doing combat, so every time that you hit somebody with two abilities, you'll get one splinter or two or three based on your current level. And that is an 8 second cooldown, so you can only collect so many splinters in 1v1 combat. Every time you level up, you'll get five splinters, so every time you allot a skill point, you get five, which means you should be, res you should be hitting your first upgrade, which is 40, at around level 7, no matter what, if you're playing lane correctly with cannons. You get one splinter for every cannon, so if you miss cannon, you are actively griefing your lane. And of course, at 120, you're going to get 15% ability power. So it's very important that you're progressively collecting splinters so that you can upgrade your abilities and increase your damage output. Now, the first skill for Syndra is Dark Spear. You can cast Dark Spear while moving, which is what makes it such a cool and awesome ability. And the idea is that you can use these with your other skills. So every single time that you put a ball on the ground, you have to be thinking, can I use this offensively, defensively? Because you can go ahead and shove it instead of doing a QE at melee range like that. So it's the bread and butter of Syndra. In order to operate all your other skills, you need Dark Spear. And of course, once again, you can cast this while moving. The upgraded variant will allow you to control two charges, which will be right after this clip. Syndra's upgraded Q allows you to store two charges of Dark Spear, which is affected by ability haste. So the more ability haste you have, the faster it recharges. But there's an individual 1.5 second cooldown on this, which means that you have to wait between casts, but you can technically just stack up a bunch of balls by resetting with W, and that way you get a 6-man ultimate like this. Or 6-ball ultimate, rather. Uh, next up, we have Force of Will, which will pick up a Dark Spear enemy minion or non-epic monster, and she'll drag it with her and be able to recast. Now, this is a cool skill because every time that you use W, it will reset the duration of your ball, which allows you to get an extra ball into your ultimate. And the way this works is that the W will launch from wherever the ball is. So if it's behind you, it'll come from behind your back. Whereas if you are casting behind you as well, it'll just go ahead and launch from that position behind you. So it speeds up the animation based on where you are in proximity to the ball being thrown. It also slows on impact, which is really fantastic because I can lead with W and then EQ off of it once they've been slowed. Every time that you put a skill point into this, you will get an additional bit of slow, but also more damage, and it'll become lower cooldown. Uh, they changed the way that Syndra W and E works, so you will be maxing Force of Will second instead of your E. In the past, when you put points into Scattered the Weak, it would get a lower cooldown, which you needed to defend yourself, but now you just get additional damage from Force of Will, which is pretty cool. Syndra's upgraded W, Force of Will, deals additional true damage on impact, which means that it's just based on your AP ratio. As you get more AP, it will get more true damage. As you can see here, it does 17 with only 54 ability power, but it gets really, really high. I'd say at three items, it's probably about an extra 100 true damage. And the reason why it's so important is because when you are itemizing and a lot of AP, you don't necessarily get penetration. So being able to basically bypass people's magic resist entirely is a really effective way at like bridging the mid-game gap. And finally, we have Scatter the Weak. Scatter the Weak is your most aggressive and defensive option because it is your knockback, your stun. It's everything that will prevent you from dying. But it projects a wave of force knocking back enemies and dark spears. So as you've seen here, it'll shove this ball back and anything that collides with it will get stunned. Or you can just use it to send an enemy away from you without the stun. Uh, they did remove a cool interaction where you could EQ first and then it would send the ball after the animation delay. But they removed that because we would just be too, too powerful. Which is tragic because it was a really cool interaction and I miss it dearly. 
but anytime that something comes in contact with that Dark Sphere push, it'll get stunned. And of course, when you upgrade it, it'll also get a upgraded version that we'll talk about later. Syndra's upgraded E basically increases the whiff, so where it covers a big portion of the lane. Um, this is really cool because it gives you extra defensive options instead of having to target it specifically, because as you can see, it covers such a huge amount of distance, but also means that you can cover more space. So as you can see here, I set two balls on the floor, I can pick one back up, and then I can do a stun like this, and I'll shoot three balls in different directions. Uh, you can technically also do this with your ultimate, so if I press Q on the floor and I get five balls and press R, you can see the balls are all in different directions and I can shoot them all in different ways. So it's like a team stun entirely. And finally, we have Unleash Power, which is a very cool skill, which utilizes all the balls currently on the map. But every time that you put a point in this, you'll get 10 ability haste for each rank. So I'll get an extra 10 haste on my Q specifically, nothing else, just my Q. And it's cool because when you get the upgraded version of Q, uh, the way the ball recharges is just based on your ability haste. So it just makes it to where you can generate balls very, very fast. So Syndra will draw on her full cosmic power, launching three Dark Spears orbiting her, plus up to four more. So the three around you will always be included in your ultimate, which means it'll always do a base of like whatever the tooltip is. So right now, do 300 damage hypothetically. Now, every time I put a ball on the floor, it'll be included in the ultimate. So this is a five ball ultimate. So the idea behind Syndra is that you want to continuously build up balls and then use the W reset so that you can delay the despawn and just get in a whole bunch of balls. And once you get the storage system, you can also include balls that way. And of course, at 100 splinters, this will execute enemies, which is fucking fantastic. And so the upgraded variant of your ultimate basically gives you a 15% execute. So if your ultimate brings them to or below 15%, it will instantly kill them. And here we'll be showing you some quick tips and tricks that you can use in your own game. Essentially what I like to do to get maximum value balls is I'll place one on the floor and then I'll wait for my Q to charge up. And then once it's ready to go, I'll stun off of that original ball, pick it back up, and then QQR, and it gives you a six ball ultimate, which is pretty nice. Um, and you can do it very self-sufficiently because of the Dark Spirit charge system, because you don't have to wait for that four second cooldown or 2.5 technically, so you could just QE at max range and then WQ into another R. This is a pretty common tech, but if you are trying to initiate a team fight or just stun as many people as possible, you'll just go ahead and ult the front line, and then you'll use that as a way to generate a bunch of balls to stun with off of your QE. But I hate to say it, but they really just removed a lot of individuality from Cinder's gameplay. It's a lot more self-sufficient, so you can just go ahead and wombo combo people off of just basic comboing all in a quick span. So she's a lot easier than before. She doesn't have as many cool tricks or tips that you can really take advantage of. Uh, when you upgrade your Q for the first time, it'll reset the CD entirely, which means you could technically get a 6-ball ultimate at level 7, like near instantly, which is pretty broken. But you're not going to be able to do anything cool like EQing. You won't be able to be uh, used to be able to QE through terrain, and it would go the entire distance. No longer does that. So you're basically just taking advantage of the fact that she has a lot higher values, and she's a lot more consistent in general with the way that she's played at the cost of your early game. But Syndra is still a really fantastic champion. She's really fun. She's really cool when you have an aggressive jungler, and I'll go and show you some gameplay footage of what that looks like. Damn. Bro is sidestepping everything. Not a bad trade, 140 for 70. I do actually have to push my wave hard in a bad spot. I need to get this level 2 minion. Damn, I didn't get Splinter off that. We're playing for an invade. Oh my god, we're actually playing with Syndra? Holy shit. Should have been playing on my higher elo account. Oh. Got a gen dying to a Nautilus Jinx.
Uh, I kind of fucked up, actually. Who eat? What? Okay. I really wasn't expecting the flash the wall. I just assumed he saw me there. Hello, Gold Pro Man, how we doing? Do you use all six minion demats on casters with Sindrin? You only get three minion demats, and typically use one on each just to help with your general pushing power. Oh, that was really bad. Uh, you see how pinging helps, guys? I pinged him and he would have done crap otherwise if I didn't ping. We lost cannon. Sorry, double crap. Alright, I gotta go back and spend my cash money. At least since Levi. Levi Ackerman? I don't know who the fuck Levi I'm assuming it's a pro player. I'm right, how are you doing? I'm doing good, Gold Pro. Good to hear you're doing alright. What's made your day alright in your terms? In your eyes? Oh my god. This... Okay. Levi from GAM? Gigabyte Marines? Is that what it is? Yes? Damn, I'm good. Game's over time for Benny. Have a good night. Let me say good night, Angry Goat. Alcohol and watching your stream? That sounds like fun. Whoops. Bro. <laughs> I'll go ahead and take my splinter stack though, if possible. You see how I'm communicating, like specifically with pings, I, sh I showed the exact minion I was gonna go on. And he knew inst he knew exactly what I wanted to do and he played around it perfectly. Just off of a singular fucking ping, dude. Like how crazy is that? Like playing with a good jungler is so fucking addicting. my boots at? Nine minutes. I'm using a biscuit. Haha. <laughs> Are you gonna be streaming for? Probably another like two hours. At the least. I try to stream four hours a day. I got flush, so I should be fine if I get ganked. Hello, Lurine. What's up? Ultimate Violent. Oh, whoa. Comet TF? I think Comet TF's not horrendous because it guarantees the Comet with gold card, but. He got ranked 1 in A when he was an import from here? Cool.
there got to be a, a Graves here. It's not that hard they're going in. Why do you think it was Vlad? Wait, how did you think it was Vlad? Just my boots. I gotta go reset. My god, he's a simp. Or something threw me off. Your mother threw me off last night when she whispered gently into my ear. My mood keeps going on for one man ult instead of multi man. Sometimes, like, priority targets is worth to generally probably not. But meow. I like your name. You ulted the 1 5. Oh, yeah. That's pretty bad. Inadvertently, thank you for the follow, Unicorn Mayhem, thank you as well. Welcome to the stream, friend. I got that sweet, sweet Q upgrade. That guy's a Kimble gem too. I got a safer play gold. Yongbi just resubscribed for four months. I've been away, but here you go. Prime Gamer and chat. Holy shit, Yongbi, thank you so much for the Prime Gaming subscription. Thank you so much. I please get some Ziani struts in chat in honor. My god, he's a simp. Happy B. <laughs> Two thumbs up. Mooney Yo. Lick traded my stream with nine viewers. Mooney Light, thank you so much for the raid. How is your stream? Fox Raid, please drink water. I refuse. I'll never drink water before the day that I don't drink water. Drinking water is for plebs, and I'm no pleb. Can I get some Ziani struts again and chat in honor of not only the raid, but also Yongbi, a long time viewer. The lover oh 1007. Thank you for the follow. Don't crochet one up, James. I'll go and hover here. Holy shit, I can't do it. An enemy has been slain.
<laughs> oh, I just fuck, dude. Having a, we are literally. I fucking love it. It's so nice. It's so 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 nice, dude. It's so fucking nice having a fucking jungler, man. Unlucky. This game's making me happy. Yo, what's up, Brigachu? You enjoying it? In what situation you pick Absolute Focus or Transcendence? Is it something more for hard winning? Um, so it just depends on if you want the extremely high AP value. Absolute Focus is only at 7%, so it's kind of situational fact that if you are poked, you will not get value from it. But Transcendence is like situationally usually better. Wow, 100 HP. So, this depends. I honestly think Transcendence is better. This game, I'm playing it's a TF. I don't really ever take poke damage if I'm positioning properly, so I just thought I'd get more value. P. Bro, I have only 65 splinters at 45 minutes. Yeah, I'm playing in Masters Plus, so I can't do OQ. Yeah, Transcendence helps a lot because you also get the CDR reset when you get a kill. Which is huge, right? Because you can get the reset on your E. GG.